American title the match. Actually, that was a match that had a new champion, but the new champion lost it in 30 seconds because of the unusual stipulation that was in there where disqualifications counted as a ball. And, and they won 16 minutes. I was watching that, that match at my, at my home after playing racquetball with Tommy Evans, who was a two-time NCAA champion and twice outstanding uh, man in the tournament and was on two United States Olympic teams. A uh, great, great amateur, former uh, coach at the University of Oklahoma. When uh, I was down there, when the present coach, Stan Abel's down there, he was a teammate of Danny Hodges. And Tommy Evans just sat there and shook his head, and he said, these guys went 16 minutes of nonstop action. And at their size, he said, what tremendous condition, what action it is. And this is just what happens when you have these great athletes. And this uh, Mr. Olympian, and the Lord of the started off at that same breakneck pace. He is so cocky, and he just can't believe it when somebody scores a great move on him. He thinks he's really invincible. Well, after gaining the Mississippi title over Bob Arthur Jr., one of the top grapplers in the world, and now stalling the tactics of number one, Paul Arndorf, there'll have to be a lot of respect shown from a lot of different quarters for Mr. Olympia, who's burst upon the scene and has the qualification to back him up in that ring. I tell you, you've got to be uh, pretty much a blind fool if you take a look at Mr. Olympia with a finely conditioned body and then watch him move. You know, you can see a lot of guys with great bodies, but they can't move. And then he's got that quickness and that change of pace and that fire. And then you see a guy swinging like Oldor does and see him reach down and bring it all back. You've got to realize that that was no accident when he beat Bob Orton Jr. That's just Bob Orton Jr.'s excuse for losing the title. Is finding out this man's for real. Because number one will test you. He'll test you mentally, he'll test you physically. There's nobody with a greater ego. I mean nobody with a greater ego than Paul Warner. He's consumed by it. He's got a lot of pride. A lot of pride. And believe me, the two movies of Pride Dog before Paul. Paul Orndorff is, is typifying that. I'll guarantee you when, you, when he falls, you got to make him fall because he'll fight you all the way down. What a great match between these two men. Orndorff clotheslined him. What a move. You see, that's what I mean. Orndorff is a true student of it. He watches everybody and sees a move they make, and then he'll try to take that same move and add something to it to make it more devastating and more effective. And he just, just about decapitated Mr. Olympia. And I'm sure in Mr. Olympia's young career, wherever all his background has been, because he's kept his identity a secret. That's the first time that's ever happened to him. But also, I'll guarantee you, when, a, when you get a lesson like that, you'll go back and look at the tapes and look at the films. And that lesson will stay in your mind because it was put there so effectively. That's it. If he gets a chance to look at it, because the way Paul Orndorff has kicked in the air, He's one man that when he gets you down and at his mercy, he doesn't relent. He stays right on top of you. And he's trying to physically break through. He wants you to know he's number one. He's trying to look at Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. When you got him down, he'll still reach down and, and go into that intestinal fortitude. And that's what champions are made of. Strong people do what they can. Weak people do what they must. I read that saying in a book somewhere that day. I think it really applies here. Strong people do whatever they can, and weak people do what they must. And there you see two strong men. And one of them has got a break out there for at least three seconds. Or go right on off there for the rest of television time. I just move here by one more. Olympia is pretty well, it uh, looks like. There goes the count. One, two. I thought Ralph Dealey was going for the three, and Orndor saw him. Orndor saw him, but the crowd is saying, no, no, he only had two. And, right, and Dealey says, only two. Power slam! Orndorff's got it now. Olympia's down to the cap. He came out. He came out, boy. You were getting ready to hit the bag. I had the bell ringer in my hand. I, that was it. The I mean, can't believe it. it. Neither can Orndorff can't believe it. Olympia came out. He's fighting for his life out there. Another slam by Orndorff. Knee drop. Covers him again. He can't hold him for the three. He can't. Everybody Stroke to the third count. 
up for the victory and he couldn't put it There he goes to the figure four. Well, he's got to insult Nibios, and then it backfired. But Orndorff back to his feet. There he goes for the, looks like the power driver like Bob Orton Jr. used. Doesn't really be a team out of it, boy. He couldn't put him over on the ground. We're seeing, we're seeing Paul Orndorff's got to really start wondering what it takes. We're seeing a really great athlete pull out all stops to survive right here. Three times, Paul Orndorff, four times. Paul Orndorff heading for the sure count. You raised your hand to ring the bell, waiting for the referee's signal. The sleeper. The sleeper. I think Orndorff is stunned. He better get out of it. He doesn't have a lot of time. Once he hooks that sleeper. Well, if you apply that pressure on him, Bill. Orndorff's face is bewildered as his air supply to the brain to the carotid arteries is touched off. Paul Orndorff is going down. He's going down. Neely's there checking him. As soon as he's helpless, Neely calls the ball to prevent possible damage. There it is. Paul Orndorff bought that sleeper to the end, but he was a for the Mississippi heavyweight champion, Mr. Olympia. We still have some time, so we'll be back with more action after this word from Mid-South Wrestling.